Uh, its foundation in 1976 has dealt with a segment of the population, namely the, the teen population and even more precisely the teen dropout population. That's the group that we serve. Now among that population, the teen dropout, school dropout population, uh, the figures are a lot different. Uh, teen unemployment all across the board in Massachusetts is right around 10 percent, all right, uh, which is quite a bit more than uh, the 4 right. percent general. But among uh, the teenage population as a whole in Massachusetts, if you break it down to black teenagers, you have more, uh, more like a 20 percent unemployment rate. Now if you focus still further on dropouts, on kids between the ages of 16 and 19 who have not finished high school, mm -hmm. the unemployment rate is more like 60 percent. And if you include in that figure the number of dropouts between the ages of 16 and 19 who are no longer even looking for work and therefore don't even register as unemployed, you get an unemployment rate overall among the dropout teenage population of close to 80 percent. So it's quite a few. Now that's, that's the group that we're targeting. We can now. talk a little bit about jobs for youth because you've been trying to unemploy these dropouts and other to students employ, some employ of, them, yeah. and keep them employed. Yeah. And this program will help perhaps. But yeah. let's, what kind of businesses are you going to be talking about? And is this going to be just a minority program? I don't think it'll be entirely a minority program. I think uh, as, as a, overall, jobs for youth serves uh, about three quarters um, minority young people, uh, sometimes a little bit more. The Youth Business Initiative uh, will not uh, target a particular ethnic uh, population. And at this point, I think it's too early for me to speculate about what the breakdown is going to be uh, ethnically. Uh, if, if it follows the rest of our programming, there will be a very substantial minority population uh, in the program. What kind of businesses are you expecting? Attention now? Yep. All right. It was apple cider time in Massachusetts Bay Colony when a son was born to Elizabeth and Nathaniel Chapman. They named the firstborn son John, but he was later to be lovingly known as Johnny Appleseed. The year was 1774, two years before the forefathers of our great nation declared independence from England. These were difficult times. Despite the hardships that Johnny suffered, he grew up to be a caring person who respected all living things. As a young boy, Johnny's love for the great outdoors made it very hard for him to concentrate on his schoolwork. In fact, on some days, especially in the spring, school was the last place that Johnny wanted to be.
voice. Here we go. Well, eventually, Johnny did learn to read and write. Well, later in life, reading and following the words of the good book would bring him as much fame as his apple tree. Johnny was about 23 years old when he decided to turn his dreams into reality. <coughs> All in buffalo trails, Indian paths, he set out into the wilderness with just a sack of apple seeds, a few maker possessions, and the clothes on his back. These were pioneer days, and Johnny hoped to ease their lot by planting apple trees across the new territories. What a sight for the pioneers when they first set eyes on this gentle but strange-looking man.
walking through the forest, when all of a sudden I came to the small town, into the small town, and I found myself smack dab in a battle between settlers and Indians. Oh, what but, is it? Well, shots were flying every which way. And as you know, I'm not fixing to hurt anyone. I'm really fond of settlers, and I'm right fond of Indians, too. So I say to myself, what should I do? What, what did you do, do Johnny? What did you do? Well, I first turned the wooden on this side. Oh, oh. And then I turned the wooden on the other side. And then, when all of a sudden, from out of the blue, a bullet came flying out at once and hit me. <gasps>
be on it if you count. You would miss it for the world. In fact, I plan on helping with the setting up.
summer night when the smell of blue apple blossoms fill the air, you can still hear the sound of Johnny humming and singing as he passes through the valleys and fields of our great land. Is that the end, Jennifer? I'm afraid so. It says the end. I best we get to bed today. Wow. Wow.